Today we're going to be talking about getting cast iron rust off. So both of these were out in my garage and I obviously let them get rusty. And I've already seasoned this one back to health, but I'm going to show you a quick, easy way to do this one. Now the first step, and I know a lot of people don't say to not put water on your cast iron, is to put hot water on your cast iron. This is just to wash it off, get any of that grime that's kind of on there off. You're going to wipe some of the rust off by doing this. You're going to just get anything that was sitting on there. Just kind of scrub it really good. All I'm using is paper towels here. You'll see right away I'm already starting to get some of that rust. So we're going to get all the rust we can off of there. And if you're like me, a lot of this rust is like really grimy and almost like a, it's like a really thick film. So the other trick is to use tin foil and go in and actually scrub it there. Uh, if you got some like a metal brush you can use on it, that'll work. You're not going to damage it because, I mean, we're talking about cast iron. So go ahead and scrub it down with some tin foil and that'll help get some of that too. So now that we've got most of that grime scrubbed off, we use the tin foil, we use just paper towels and hot water. You see I got a hot pan, so I'm just going to turn this on high and I'm going to let it sit on my gas until this pan starts to heat up. And you're going to notice the water is going to start to dry out. Once that happens, we're going to go ahead and just drop in some olive oil and coarse ground sea salt. So you just want to put enough olive oil in that you're going to be able to coat, coat the entire bottom of this. You're going to drop some sea salt in as well. What you don't want to do is have this start to smoke. If it starts smoking, then you're going to want to drop your heat off altogether. Now that it's heated, I can still grab the handle so it's not as hot. I'm just going to want this to move around and get it in all the corners that you can. The other thing that I do is I keep a rag that's specifically for this that's already dirty. And what I'm going to do is just wipe this olive oil in here and wipe it around so I cover all the edges. And it's gonna really absorb all that oil, but it's gonna kinda of coat it. And then we're gonna redo the olive oil and salt process for kinda of like the finish on it. You already start to see that we're getting that dark color back, that really deep black, that's what you want. No brown, nothing like that. So a lot of deep, dark colors. Make sure we get all the edges. Now the second time around, again, we're just going to have it on low heat to get it started. Nice to get it nice and warm. Just put a little more oil. You don't want to put a lot this time because this is really just a coat. And then just a little tiny bit of sea salt once again. We're going to let it heat up. We're going to do the same thing where we kind of get it around all the corners. Use our same rag and then just go in and kind of finish it off. What's happening here is the, he the uh, heat is actually opening up the cast iron a little bit to allow this oil to fall into it. So it's just kind of creating just a little bit of crease in the metal itself, or in the iron itself there. So we're just gonna go ahead and start to move that around. And again, you don't want it smoking, you don't want it too hot that you can't touch it. That's all we're gonna do there and finish that out. So there you go, here's your final two clean pans. Now you do see there is some discoloration there, but as we start cooking again, we're gonna fill that back in with all the uh, different type of cooks. So if you leave it out and you let it get rusty, this is a really quick, easy way to clean it up. And one last thing about my rag, I always keep a rag in a bag, it's the one I clean with. I never wash it uh, because it's really, really grimed up and dirty. But this is the one I always use when I'm doing the oil and salt. And then I keep it in a bag and I keep the bag open so it can breathe a little bit because if you close it off, you don't want it to get moldy and things like that. So I keep it open, let it breathe, and it stays really nice in that bag.